Hello, welcome to the We Build, You Build special episode. I'm here with Colin. Colin, what's up? What's up, Taylor? I almost called you Isaac. <laughs> it's late on a Sunday. <laughs> I feel like I'm usually queuing Isaac when I'm on episode. <laughs> that is true. Usually we're a Triforce, but today we're a Die Force. That's right. We're a force to die for. Nice. That'll be the name of our first album. <laughs> it will be a mix of folk music and metal. <laughs> Very cool. Well, you have that to look forward to <laughs> in the next special episode. But today we're going to be talking about our brand new community segment that we piloted for the first time in the month of April, We Build, You Build. So the idea was we pick a hero and a format and put it out there to you, the community, and we join you on a journey while we build and play test a brand new deck. And we chose Arachne Solitary Confinement just out from Outsiders and we did it here we are Colin. we did it asc in the house yeah uh so where to begin so what did you think uh about this exercise we decided to do for one i thought it was it was a lot of fun to just dive into a, a new hero have a a reason to commit and not and a reason to follow through even if you know at a certain point it was like well i don't think i'll do very well at my skirmish but i will be playing arachne solitary confinement um so i think it was a great exercise in kind of ex deck building exploring a new hero um you know looking at what the class plus uh, his his or theirs uh, hero ability can do, um, and how that kind of fits in, you know, where Blitz is at, which is not a place I've spent a lot of time lately. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, you know, some rough edges and some, you know, shocking reminders of what actually you know happens in Blitz. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, you know, I think overall it was a lot of fun. I'm excited to continue this into the future, you know, try. And it's funny, like, even after I was done, I was like, I kind of want to like push a little bit more on Arachne and see like if I could, if take what I've learned and try a couple other ideas out. But then I was like, well, I don't know if I want to play Blitz. So we'll see if I, <laughs> if I can come back to it. But what do you think about the, the exercise? Yeah, kind of to echo what you said uh i enjoyed the challenge of building you know something brand new from the ground up and i really love assassin as a class so that that part for me was fun and you know it's it, it the deck the, the deck building part is always fun for me so that was like really interesting but then you start playing like a lot of blitz and uh i think losing in blitz is the worst <laughs> you know like in limited you're like well my deck fucking sucked and you know there's a bit of luck and other factors involved for me to lose this game and in CC, you're like, well, at least there were like a ton of decisions I made for the most part in every matchup. And the game's long enough to where, you know, I can convince myself maybe it's possible. Uh, but in Blitz, it's much harder to lose on a personal level because it's over really fast and it's usually egregious. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of times you're like, oh, fuck, I fucked up turn one and now the game's over. You know, yeah. or just like, well, I have no sideboard, so this is over in five minutes, you know? Yeah. So, so that part was tough being a person who doesn't dwell in the blitz space. And I didn't really understand what the meta was or who was still like Prism fucking showed up. And I was like, 
Oh, right. Prism. Yeah. What do I do? Oh, <laughs> oh Chain is here. He has yeah. better go again than I do. Yeah. Uh, Although getting to shred a husk is pretty sick. <laughs> I bet. You know? Yeah. I bet. That's pretty fun. But Husk anyway, Husk should not be in Blitz. Let's, I'm just going to say that right here. Husk should not be in Blitz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but other than the, you know, the personal pre- biases I have towards Blitz, I thought it was really fun. And I also loved the uh, engagement we had from the community. So uh, I think it accomplished its goal. Totally. Yeah, shout out to everyone who joined us on this journey in our Discord and on Twitter. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun to do this together and explore it together. So I think that was like the goal of what we wanted to do. So mm-hmm. even getting just a little bit of that is like makes it an enjoyable thing to do together. Yeah, uh, for sure. For All sure, right. for sure. So let's, let's dive into it. Uh, let's dive in. So you and I both have, you know, there obviously there's a bit of overlap of, you know, there's just some cards that are very good and make sense in this kind of deck. Um, but we we landed in pretty different areas. So I think this will be fun to kind of chat through. But I'm curious where you started kind of and where you ended up and kind of the versions of your deck as, um, that you may have tried out. Yeah, so like originally you start I started out with like okay, we put put CNC in here, we put uh E strike in here, uh we put other majestics like concealed blade and maybe knives out or something like that for blues. Uh and then like well uh what else is good in blitz, you know, or or whatever and tried to have kind of like a a balanced deck of just good cards and that's not how blitz works (laughs) (laughs) you need to have like a broke not a broken but you need to just have like the most powerful thing all the time right now so having a balance of like resources and different ways to kind of win the game did not work Mm. it was too fair and too slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's where I kind of initially started and then kind of like wound up just trying to figure out what was good and what wasn't good or, or whatever, you know, what was uh, most of my opponents doing? Oh, mm-hmm. they just like kind of weren't blocking my attacks because they weren't scary enough. Mm -hmm. So then how do I make them more scary? Well, Mm -hmm. also then like trying to punish the decks. Uh, So then, okay. So then this was kind of my thesis of my deck was, okay, nobody's going to have defense reactions because Icelander and Kano are a thing. And if you have like six or even four defense reactions, that's a huge liability in your 40 card deck. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just going to lean in really hard to just all of the best cheap attacks and um, attack reactions since nobody has any defending cards. And Mm -hmm. if somebody wanted to give me two cards on one of my zero for threes, that would be like good enough to kind of keep tempo. So that's kind of then where I landed. What about you? I think I had a pretty similar starting point as you as far as the perspective and where I was looking to begin my deck building. I was putting an eye towards the newer cards like from Outsiders. Um, I didn't have the same thought about defense reactions. I think the last time I played attention to Blitz... Uh, you know, there was still like old him with like mostly defense reactions going around. So I actually included burdens of the past because I was like, oh, it's a blue blocks for three. And if someone mm. tries to go hardcore defense reactions on me, I'll just, you know, use that against them, which uh, could be fun. Um, didn't see any uh, of that deck. So that <laughs> one came out pretty quickly. But yeah, I also tried Concealed Blade. 
Um, and again, looking at, you know, good assassin cards with stealth because we want to use uh, Arachne's ability. Um, and, you know, I think the... Yeah, I, I, I actually, I'm looking back. I actually, what I did was, and shout out to Fabrary um, mm. for their latest update where you can version your deck. Um, you can kind of like set a point and then make edits and it'll kind of keep track of different versions. So I have like, you know, at least three or four different versions of my deck that I can kind of look back through now, which is fun to do um, and just kind of see how I change it. I think when I started, I, I focused more on the stealth cards and the new cards because I wanted to see, okay, I want to get a feel for them because I know things like Enlightened Strike or CNC will probably come in later when mm -hmm. I find the mm -hmm. cards that I don't like. Um, I also was like, Plunder Run is legal in Blitz. Yeah. So let's let's do that, um, which eventually did come out in favor of Premeditate because it was actually harder to get Plunder Run into Arsenal than it was to just play Premeditate. Um, and there's also the fun combo of premeditate uh, with Codex of Frailty being your last card, mm -hmm. and you play that, and you get the buff from premeditate, yeah, and then you get a sweet card in Arsenal. So that that was always a lot of fun to do, um, and two ponder tokens, which is kind of pointless, but um, you know, still fun. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I think our decks kind of started in a similar spot, which is funny, um, you know. I think actually my my starting point was probably closer to where you ended um, with minus a few more attack reactions. But um, yeah, I, and I'm curious how you felt the play between like the stealth hero ability and, you know, the stealth reactions, which I think um, were really powerful. But in mine, I kind of focused on Razor's Edge and Spike with Blood Rot. And I think you ended up in a much more uh, spiky uh, deck version than me. Yeah, I ran all of the spikes. So Blood Rot, Frailty, Inertia, and also two Razor's, ed also razor's Edge and Razor Reflex mm -hmm. and Spreading Plague. So I just have a buttload of attack reactions uh which is fine because they all block for three which is great um and i was should we just read out the deck list is that is that good on radio people do <laughs> that right yeah i mean you could talk through talk through your list uh okay so my deck list we'll start with the equipment uh, and these are all one ofs. So Arcane Lantern, Black Tech Whispers, Crown of Providence, Findal Spring Tunic, Nolrin Hood, Spider's Bite, Flick Knives, Nerve Scalpel, Orbitoclast, Redback Shroud, and Scale Peeler. Um, so basically, I just ran Crown of Providence, Black Techs, and Red Black Red Back Shroud with flick knives and then chose my blade of choice kind of depending on the matchup mainly it's mm -hmm. just uh spider's bite and like scale peeler mm -hmm. uh because a lot of decks have like a fridge they want to use so your Dorinthias, your old hymns even your chains so i kind of liked uh scale peeler so that they couldn't get a lot of value out of their equipment um, and then Redback Shroud, I found out to be very, very good. I liked it a lot to have basically the one resource for any of the uh, spike cards or razor reflex available mm -hmm. whenever I need it to be because Blitz is so fast mm -hmm. um, that I was, I, I felt that was really strong and that I could also use it uh, to keep tempo to block first and then use its ability um the one time so it's like tunic but for me it felt like a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. um, but you had a few different pieces of equipment yeah so i think our equipment was largely the same i think one well, of the biggest difference is is i did not run the redback shroud mm -hmm. um, and then i ended up throwing in ironhide gauntlet 
which uh, might have been a bit cute, but I'll explain that in a second. So <laughs> for me, Spring Tunic was the one to go with because in the games where I felt I was doing well and had a, you know, I had good game into the matchup was the ones that went longer. So the value I got from being able to hit Tunic two or three times right. seemed more than the one block and the one resource from Redback Shroud because it's not likely that you'll get to recur your equipment with the silver. I think mm-hmm. I did it a couple times, but that's not um that didn't seem to be like the the norm of of how this deck plays just because there's not enough contract cards really to support that. It's just sometimes they don't care and they just let let you hit with leave no witness. And if you codex a frailty you leave no witness uh and you play it end up playing it four times in a in a game, you could actually get there. But <clears throat> So that's why I went with the tunic. And then the idea with Ironheart Gauntlet was in the matchups that were like, you know, people would go real tall um, or just mm-hmm. like, you know, present a lot more damage with hit effects. <clears throat> I wanted to be able, so it was mostly like Guardians um, and like Dorinthia, I think. And I think I might have thrown it in for Chain or Briar or something. Sure. Um, the kind of, goal of that was to block with iron iron hide and pitch plague hive so it's like i uh, block to and give them uh something to kind of like mess them up which when it worked out it was a lot of fun um i think if i wanted to fully go into that i probably should have had another piece of iron hide equipment to be able to block four by right. pitching that but with just the one um it was it was fine, uh, but yeah, I think it was just kind of a little cute. But you have so many slots in your sideboard that it seemed fine to to throw that in there for that um, for that purpose. So yeah, the main call out I will have is that having all of your uh, daggers in the sideboard is awesome because you're yeah. like, oh, you're a wizard. I'm playing Orbitoclast. Yeah. Sweet. And yep. that that was just lots of fun to be able to kind of bring in the different daggers for the specific situation. Yeah. I, I did like that feeling like you have tools for the job as an assassin would have. Uh, that was really great. And um, just also shout out to black tech whisperers. The more I play with that card, the more I think it's just so freaking good, you yeah. know, like, Especially when you have so many attack reactions, it's pretty easy to make sure your assassin card hits and getting to block one with your Snapdragon scalers and then use them to give something go again is just freaking baller. So I think that's a just a really powerful piece of equipment as well. Did you find that you were giving your attacks go again with it? Because I just... For me, I always felt like, well, I play the stealth card, it has go again, and then I probably have another attack, and if I'm lucky, an attack reaction. Um, So it never felt like I had the need to break them for that purpose. Um, But I'm curious if if your experience was different. Yeah, it was. So sometimes you can lead off with leave no witness, and they're like, eh you know, whatever. Uh, I don't even have a card in Arsenal right now, so I'll just let this hit or something, you know, or I'll just block for three, and then you can black tech it and then play your two stealth cards. I thought that was a sick play. Or um, the combo with uh, the Shroud when they don't know that you're about to spike their... Uh, spike infiltrate or whatever and you get over the top and then you give it go again and then you have you know then you play your leave no witness and also get their arsenal or a few more cards or something um you know it definitely like comes up uh but it's not like uh in certain matchups it comes up where it's where it's really really useful so nice 
yeah cool uh, yeah i think i i tried to go for it a couple times and uh i think more than half the times like, i ended up getting stuffed by a uh defense reaction <clears throat> but uh, which i also felt was fine too yeah you know what i mean like they might not play the defense reaction and now you know their turn sucks so you can also just kind of tank it and mm -hmm. then uh you know come back with something yeah. a little bit better i um, i even broke ahead. them just to break them because i if i had two silver i was like well i'll yeah. just get the one block back and like totally that's, and that's worth that's it pretty fun to do yeah. yeah it super is uh let's get into the meat of the deck here so i'll read mine out again i suppose and then we can talk about what you had that was different and some things that were the same so totally okay cool so i have two enlightened strike i don't think i have a single one of oh i do have a one of so i will indicate that so for the reds i have enlightened strike hurl infect infiltrate isolate leave no witness malign nimbleism prowl ravenous rabble Razor Reflex, Razor's Edge, Sedate, One Sigil of Solace, Spike with Blood Rot, Frailty, Inertia, Wither, and then for Yellows, I have Isolate, Spreading Plague, and then One Blue Shred. <laughs> the single blue shred. <laughs> you know, Love for it. my homies. Yeah. <laughs> Poor blue shred out for the homies. Um, I have several one ofs, which probably speaks to my uh, inability to build a coherent deck. But uh, we have one backstab, two CNCs, one death touch, uh, two infect, two infiltrate, two isolate, two leave no witness, two nimbleism, one oasis respite two premeditate, two prowl, two ravenous rabble, one razor reflex, two razor's edge, two scar for a scar, one shred, two sink below, two spike with blood rot, two wither, all in red. Uh, and then I have two blue razors. Oh no, in yellow I have two codex of frailty and a plague hive. And then in blue I have two razor's edge and two blue shreds. Nice. Um, yeah. Pretty similar. So I have 35 reds. You have 33. Um, but we do differ on some cards. Yeah. Uh, so did you feel like Command and Conquer was good? I I feel like it was stuck in there from original Arachne Huntsman days of like, oh yeah, Spider's Bite and then Command and Conquer. Right. Um, you know, is harder to block. Uh, it was like a little hard to get off sometimes, but with Tunic and a red, I could often do it. And then every now and then I'd be able to premeditate uh, a CNC for mm. nine, mm. which was like pretty gross. So it, it seemed good, but I, I feel like it, was less impactful right overall i do like your addition of premeditate i think that is better than my nimbleisms but i also don't have any targets that don't target nimbleism mm. but premeditate just has that hit effect and being able to get that extra card like i found a lot of times i was just playing four card hands Mm -hmm. um so actually having an arsenal would have i think been pretty big uh so one of the things i have different than you is my hurl my red hurls yeah which i really liked uh because it made it so i could three card nine you know so like hurl infect you know sedate or something mm -hmm. like that which feels like mm -hmm. a pretty good turn um and so that's what i liked that like hurl and ravenous rabble felt great because it meant i could just do one more uh chain link on an attack and hurl has the added benefit of 
for some reason, if I block with flick knives, um, I can still get that like instant speed damage to win the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I started there. Uh, it was in my original deck. I had the hurl. Um, and it just, I don't know. It, it seemed like I would want to use it if I had the concealed dagger or concealed blade, as it was called. Yeah. Um, blade. So that I could re equip a, a dagger because it, you know, once you do that, you're down a dagger and, you know, you only have one more time you can uh, flick knives with it. I mean, it, it it is cool because you can do that after attacking with that dagger, which, you know, flicks knives does not allow you to do. Right. Um, so I, I did, I did kind of like it, but I didn't feel like it was strong enough. Um, and I also didn't like the two block. Right. Yeah. So I felt like there's, you know, a few too many two blocks. So it kind of just fell out because that whole line of play of like trying to throw daggers and re-equip them didn't really work out. And then it just felt like a worse, you know, go again card, which, uh, you know, I, I, hear your reasoning and i it yeah. makes me kind of reconsider it especially with the blocking with flick knives um giving you that same ability uh to do this later on which i think could have been good because there was certain times where i was like man i really need to block with my flick knives and <laughs> i won't be able to probably win this game without without it now so um yeah i think that was one that one's pretty interesting i uh I do think premeditate was really strong. Um, like I said before, the codex of frailty, like a two card hand where you play premeditate or, or it's like you have one stealth card and premeditate and a codex. And it's like, you play that with go again, you premeditate and then you codex of frailty, like a leave no witnesses into mm -hmm. arsenal. And then you're coming in for seven or like a de death touch for nine. Um, if you have a tunic up, uh, or a resource floating, like those plays felt really good right. and impactful. And I really enjoyed that. Um, I had a blue captain's call instead of nimbleism up until the last night before skirmish. Um, and I think I should have kept the blue captain's call just based on the number of wizards I ended up playing mm -hmm. against and wishing I had some blues to pitch uh, because it's it was just one point uh, extra of damage. Um, if I did play out the blue captain's call and, you know, but two points of like health, if I was able to pitch it. So, right. Um, you know, that's just how it goes. Indeed. Um, let's see. One of my different cards also was malign, which mm -hmm. I actually put in pretty late, but because people are running like Oasis or Peace of Mind, because those are more flexible via or like for wizard and for uh, melee attackers, mm -hmm. Malign actually became like pretty good because then they couldn't play their Oasis and then you can like throw a spike on top of it or they have to double block it or something and really mutes their turn. So Malign mm -hmm. was kind of like a, a sleeper good card for me uh but still not i don't think better than probably just as good as prowl but i don't think better than sedate uh wither or infect mm. but yeah, maybe think... maybe better than infiltrate i don't know but i i love infiltrate though that's the most fun <laughs> The most fun card ever you hit then like the number of times where it's like okay cool i hit i'm like oh i just got a sink below that i can play on my you know yeah on your turn and i get to keep five cards like this is this is so great uh or just getting to play like any kind of you know other classes card just felt like super fun and i would like go out of my way to do it even if it was like stupid just because you know <laughs> well yeah that. getting getting to go uh like infect into war tune herald is pretty sweet <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think i got that uh but i did 
forget. There was like some uh, guardian card that I got to play, like a choke slam or something, and it was just like, <laughs> yeah, cool, I'll, I'll pitch a blue and play this. <laughs> no problem um yeah I, I can definitely see malign being a good call there is a, a lot of damage prevention and being able to keep them from doing that i thought was pretty good that's kind of the reason similar reasons i had backstab um was to prevent the defense reactions being played because even though there's not a lot there seemed to be enough that when they stuffed you it felt bad. Um, so I think that uh, I, I could totally see that. And I, I would try that out in the future because um, I also probably would have two Oasis Respites and maybe no Sync Belows just because the Sync Belows were like fine. But I, when I eventually looked over at your deck, I, I liked the look of it because it just seemed a bit more proactive whereas mine was like super mid-rangey um right which in those mid-rangey matchups i felt like it was really good and often it would go almost to like fatigue and i would be able to uh, kind of like sneak mm -hmm. out some wins which i really enjoyed those matchups the best um but i think with your three spikes and then your three uh stealth uh on hits of the sedate infect and wither which you know i had infect and wither but not the sedate um i think i may have wrongly uh undervalued inertia overall so i thought yeah. that was pretty cool that's definitely something i think i have come in general in the game to appreciate as being very strong maybe mm -hmm. stronger sometimes than blood rot is the inertia token uh forcing your opponent to only have a four card hand is really good uh or if they try to block out your turn and are left with one card uh then they just can't save it yeah. you know which is really good uh which i i really liked i do like your copy so like one of my flex spots for sure is the sigil of solace mm -hmm. um which was like kind of my idea of a free way to combat wizard a little bit um and i also can see your addition of like oasis respite making more sense in your deck because you're main boarding tunic where i am not um mm -hmm. And I kind of would like to have two sigils, but I'm not really sure what card I would cut down. Yeah. Maybe maybe my blue shred, I don't know. <laughs> uh to add another one in there. Uh so I found I, you know, I had the two blue shreds and the red shred. I found shred when it hits to be like like amazing. Like yeah. it it often won me games. Um and i i did like having those in there um but you know i think overall and i think this kind of leads us into the kind of next question of where arachne solitary confinement fits in the blitz meta um i feel like just the predominance of wizard is like it can't be ignored and as much as blitz is wide open and you never know what's going to be at your local thing there is going to be probably enough wizards that if you can if you get it's like i won my first round and then immediately went up against uh local killer john zapata on icelander <laughs> and it was just like oh okay cool well i'm i'm gonna lose right now <laughs> yeah um, and yeah, the only hope I've found is if you actually do get to go first and they disrespect one of your attacks and you like uh, sedate and then you spike it, you know, mm -hmm. and it goes over the top. And so you get that inertia token and they can't be on an arsenal um, and you kind of have a window there to where you can just like burn them down really fast because... Mm -hmm uh they want to like block with some cards and then bother you but if you can just like blast them down through luck <laughs> yeah then you sure. you can win that game but it's it's really hard yeah i th i think 
you know, and I feel like it, even with like the most aggressive version of this deck, I think overall it's it's pretty fair. Uh, yeah, it's nothing wildly yeah. overpowered. It is <clears throat> it forces your opponent to think a lot um, because of the various on hits and the kind of different vectors that you're attacking them on through them. Um, which I found to be like the most interesting part of this. Uh, but it's, it is very middle of the road. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, that, that comes with its own, own stuff, but I could see, I could see like a future where some of like the OP heroes are living legend out and it is much more mid rangey meta for blitz. And I could see Arachne solitary confinement really, really shining in those moments um and I, i'd be down to like get back into it in mm-hmm. that moment yeah yeah i i fully agree like you know your your best turn uh kind of caps out at like 10 to you know 12 damage mm-hmm which is just like kind of not enough, you know? And that's if you get a hold on to all of your cards and you happen to have a yellow or a blue, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's all pretty easy. It's like none of it is at a break point unless your dagger hits and they only have, you know, the certain type of card anyway. So, uh, yeah, like the just overall explosiveness of the deck is low yep so that's it's it's kind of biggest drawback i would say yeah i think that's fair um it just it does give you all the fun things about playing assassin as a class i think yeah uh which is cool you know like i said earlier having the uh array of daggers for every situation is really fun being able to put on scale peeler and you know when someone learns that earth or bounty or you know how temper works yeah and they took that scale peeler first and then they block with it and you're just like cool that that gets destroyed now and they're like wait yeah. what and you're just like yeah that's how that works so you know good goodbye sift valda <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to generate that was the funny the funniest game i had was like i destroyed earth or bounty like turn two or three and then just the rest of their deck was just like all these stupid cards that draw cards. And they're just like, well, the, the value of this is completely gone now, uh, which I really enjoyed that, even though it still was a very close game, considering all that as well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's really fun. Yeah, you can do that with like Shred 2 on like Flame Scale Furnace. Mm-hmm. It's just like, you're donezo, bro. Yeah. Which is great. So, uh, go ahead. I was gonna ask you what was, and we may have already kind of covered, but kind of like what was your favorite part about playing Arachne Solitary Confinement? Uh, just kind of the getting to play attack reactions is always so fun. So it's mm-hmm. basically that. Like, I love a turn zero. Like, uh, you know, you go prowl into any other stealth card. And they're just like, I don't know, whatever, block it with a piece of equipment perfectly. And then you're like, okay, well, now here's Spike with frailty, you know? Mm -hmm. And you have an inertia token now. Like, what's up, you know? Your your first turn's like totally fucked. And I dealt, (laughs) you know, like uh, a good chunk of damage. So now I have a little bit of a life lead and that's kind of all I need, you know? Yeah. So that was, I think that was my favorite part, you know, for sure. And just like having, having two, if you have two stealth cards with on hits and you just, and that's like pretty good kind of mid to late game. Like if you can go, uh, infect into wither or vice versa or whatever. And they're like, shit, I don't really want to take like this three damage and then get a blood rot, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm uh is is pretty good as well what about you what was your favorite part i mean i think i i like 
what you said about the attack reaction is because I, I don't play a lot of decks, you know, previously that do attack reactions. So getting into assassin, it's it's a whole nother world of like, well, do I have it or not? Do you want to yeah, block or yeah. not? And like, you know, the 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 bad part is that in Blitz, they were just like, I don't care. I'm just going to do 27 damage to you next turn anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it felt a little like, oh, well, you took my three damage and you got, you know, Blood Rot. Oh, you're going to take five damage instead. <laughs> um, but, you know, they were just like, well, I'll just end the game. So yeah. that, that part was rough. But I, I liked, I just liked all the different on hits. I liked, you know, the the fun interactions. I loved stacking spike with blood rot on and then in fact and giving them two blood rot oh yeah that's the move pitching plague hive and then putting out my cards and rolling a die and being like yep you get this one and seeing them (laughs) react to that uh and then just shredding for the win on certain things you're just like you know so it was really just like assassin stuff that i really liked and i think that you know his ability just lets you play more cards uh than usually uh, so, or the Huntsman or Azuri gets to play because they're kind of doing, you know, you know, one or two cards a turn, um, and they kind of a different game plan. So this one was fun because you're just like, okay, what do you think about this card? What do you think about this card? But unfortunately, they were like, I don't care. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, that 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 well, it's like they don't care until they had to, and they're like, shit, now I gotta care about this, and you're like, yeah, now you gotta care, um, but. Yeah, I think that was good. Uh, and then to kind of like switch it back to, I guess, you know, that, that co- saying that that is what I didn't like about it, which was that in Blitz, like, I think what I learned from this whole thing, and I don't know if other people already say this, but like Blitz seems just like basically a degenerate format where like the most degenerate je- deck wins out. Right. And like, you know, uh, you could say, you know, consistency and whatever but like you know icelander and kano in cc are waiting for you to get down to this health level so that they can kill you quickly uh and then you have heroes like chain who has husk and they're just like yeah i start with 26 health Mm -hmm. and banish cards and get go again and you know do a bunch of arcane damage as well yeah and prism who can just slam heralds and you're just like okay well that's (laughs) <laughs> that's just that just sucks <laughs> totally <laughs> to against so yeah yeah so yeah i mean it's just that's the hardest part is that your losses are just absolute blowouts <laughs> you know uh because it's way different if you just like lose a close game you know mm-hmm. you're like wow man that game was good but when prism just steamrolls you or uh kano kills you turn two or whatever it's just like not great so yeah and and that's not uh, the deck's fault it's just kind of blitz so yeah which Which, is fine like yeah we i don't need to like harp on that that's just what i understand it to be and that's why i don't play it as much but i i did enjoy and the games where it was like grindy like you know, full 30 minute games. I was like, yeah, that was fun. Like it was incremental bits of damage. It was a little bit of pitch stacking and, you know, and then I shredded you for the win Mm -hmm. uh, after I got you down uh, by hitting you with some daggers. So um, that part, it it definitely overall was more fun than I, I think I thought it would be, but just, you know, it was also just like a cool reminder of, uh, uh, and not cool as in like, cool like that was dope it was more like cool like as in it was cold <laughs> and frigid reminder that blitz is blitz is blitz and you know you're gonna deal with <laughs> all of that stuff totally <clears throat> uh should we move on to input from the community this is the you play portion of we play you play so or we, we mean, build uh, you play yeah there you go <laughs> We didn't rip this segment off from another podcast. We totally did not. It's the original uh, idea. You build. This is a you build section. But first, we'll start with some questions, uh, and then we'll get into some other feedback. So how about you take question one? Okay. Thor Mike asks, 
from Discord. If you ran hurl, how often did you find yourself play paying the one? Or was it there just in case you had to block with flick knives? Boom, Thor Mike nailed it. Neat. Very few times did I pay the one. It was there when I blocked with flick knives. On the nose there, sir. Well done. Well played. Awesome. Well uh, built. I think he had a follow-up question, which was, did you find the three power attacks with on-hit effects into another three power with hit effects surprisingly more powerful than you thought? Or did it feel lackluster, especially into the more tanky heroes? So I think, <clears throat> I think it could be powerful, but only if they let it hit. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, they're just like, if you don't have the attack reaction and they just block it with one card, you're like, dang, okay. Well, that was that was a really good card I played there, and maybe I should have pitched it <laughs> with an attack reaction for later. So it, it was a bit of both in my experience. What about you, Taylor? Yeah, kind of. But I think they were good. Like, if they strip a card, your regular attack, basically, you know, that's fine for me. You know, obviously, you want it at a break point with go again, but uh, it was cool. So I ran two spreading plagues, so I could pitch those for late game. So if they were trying to block, like you know, ooh, do you have? Oh, okay, you still have a razor's edge. I'm going to double block this and you can't kill me. Like, well, now you have two uh, blood rot, blood rot poxes. Yeah. So now you're really going to die. Um, <laughs> so that kind of combo is what makes it good is that you have the potential for them to hit, but when you don't have it, yeah, it's lackluster, but you could say that about any deck, you know, you get the dreaded non-arrow hand. You get the dreaded all attack, no attack re or non-attack actions. You know, mm -hmm. all defense reactions, etc. So, yep. Um, all right, and then from Hayden, uh, what matchups were the most fun? He said he got stuck with a lot of wizards and mechs on Talishar, and that skewed his experience. I I totally understand that. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed any ninja. Mm. Any ninja was really fun. Um, trying to think, I actually had fun playing against Chain and uh, like Reinar. Basically, that anything that wasn't Prism or a Wizard, I was like, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I thought. Uh... Guardians outside of old him were good. Old him just ice reacting all the time really sucked. Mm. Uh, I I found that I didn't. I often would get caught with like, okay, I want to arsenal this card, or I want to you know follow up this attack with uh, you know with another attack and not an attack reaction. So uh, I would kind of get like put off my game a lot by old him, and I think. I have just a completely losing record there. Uh, I ended up playing against a Yoji who was just like life gain, which mm. was like, I don't even know why you're playing Yoji. Just play a, a better guardian, but you know, <laughs> let's you do whatever you want. Totally. Um, and, but yeah, the, I, I think ninjas were fun. Uh, Fi and Ira, Ira is a little tough just cause she's just solid and good. Um, but I did enjoy those matchups um yeah and again you know i <laughs> i didn't like chain i was just like getting flashbacks of like wow yeah this guy was was really good and then dorinthia i also found really hard just because she can just stack a lot of damage real quickly yeah um and yeah so i think uh it totally makes sense. Like mechs and wizards, like they're going to be hard. I, I, the only win I got at my skirmish was against a mech. And that was because he forgot to put out his Teclo pounder at the start of the game. And I, when I told him he could do that since we hadn't done anything, he was like, no, this is, you know, this is a competitive 
thing and I will not do it. And I was like, all right, man, well, thanks. And (laughs) (laughs) ended up winning that game. Um, But yeah, the the Wizards is hard. I, I don't think I want, I I'm curious if you just tacked a deck only for wizard and if like you could take it there or if even then it's still just like too much to deal with. Yeah, that's an interesting question, and I would have to try it to figure that out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like it still wouldn't be good. I think you'd live a little bit longer, but as soon as you pitch too many cards or have to leave your hand empty, they're probably just going to die. Yeah, or get you too low enough. Um. Theory going off over here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Also from Thor Mike. Thor Mike was super into this, which we super appreciate. Hell yeah. Speaking of super, he says, super fun exercise. What was y'all's favorite part of the whole project? My favorite part was checking in with everybody and seeing where people were at. Uh, and also the added difficulty level that I constantly put on myself of not looking at anybody else's list and yeah, just that was trying cool. to trying to do this on my own because I I am still, you know, learning to deck build and, you know, seeing you know, seeing how I did, but which wasn't great. But like I, I feel like I was able to kind of like do a little bit better at at kind of figuring it out. I think I just forgot that it was most likely gonna be a bunch of wizards when I showed up on the day. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I, I think I'd have to agree with you. Like the getting to have the discourse with everybody and, uh, talk about it. And I super appreciated your, uh, extra level of challenge by just using only your brain to deck build. And it's pretty cool how similar our lists uh, kind of came out. I guess they're kind of also, you could argue in a smart call, card pool, really not similar, but still. <laughs> However way you cut it, it's cool that you did it all on your own and definitely super commendable for that one, for sure. Way cool. Nice. Way, way cool. All right. And then we've got, again, MVP of the We Build, You Build is Thor Mike. Uh, coming in with his feedback. He said, it felt a lot stronger than I expected, especially if people didn't respect your on hits. Felt pretty flexible as well. You could pivot in between uh, between offense and defense easily. And then he says, Codex of Blood Rot is a sleeper in Blitz, he feels like. So uh. I think I think he kind of summed it up pretty well. Like when people didn't respect your on hits, you're like, this is going to be a good game. Yeah. And when they did, you were like, damn, I just got stuffed and just traded a card for card, which like can be good, but it it's like there's a limited number of really potent threats. So if they all get blocked efficiently, it's kind of it's kind of rough. Um but I did not try Codex of Blood Rot. So I'm I'm curious to uh maybe give that a shot because I I did like Codex of Frailty for sure. Yeah, I didn't I I didn't put the codexes in because I wanted to keep my block threes pretty high. Um, but maybe I should have been running a uh, codex of frailty. It's also the reason I omitted plague hive uh, as well yeah. um, is because of that. But they, you know, I could be swayed into those for sure. Yeah. I think the only reason I didn't do Codex of Blood Rot is just because putting something into Arsenal didn't seem like from my hand didn't seem as good. Um, I, you know, I think you are going to do that two damage more often than not. And then you do get the ponder token as well. Uh, so it could be pretty good. And I, I think if you run like, um, uh, virulent touches or Mm -hmm. uh the death touches i think that could be like a really uh interesting way to go but yeah i think uh blood rot pox definitely won me some games so i think yeah 
I, I was like, I was like, man, is there like a lace that works for assassin? It was just like, no, it's only on, on the hit or the attack reaction. So right. I'm, uh, I, I could see that working its way in there, at least for testing. For sure. Yeah. That's a, uh, perhaps a great note to end it on. I appreciate everybody who was along for the ride with us or, you know, even just, you know, tried a couple of days of building a brand new hero and then was like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> That's great too. We just appreciate yeah. that you participated and, um, you know, listened to what we had to say. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, I think if anything, it is just an exercise in trying out something new and with all the digital tools we have right now, it's super easy to do that. Um, I know that uh, Hayden was building up from the uh, Blitz pre-con deck. Um, I think he used oh, that right. as yeah. his starting point. So, um, you know, it was cool to see where he was going, especially him. I think he was like keeping out cards he didn't have, um, like some of the legendaries and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just like a useful, fun thing to do. And I'm excited to do it again, I think next time um my guess is it will be somewhere around dust till dawn release um and maybe we'll check out this new prism or this new shadow room blade more likely yeah uh yeah yeah, maybe yeah not in blitz too maybe we'll switch it up we'll go go to cc and you know play with the big kids <laughs> totally yeah so let us know uh kind of what your hopes and wishes are for this segment, uh, what you would like to see improved or to do. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we're open to ideas and your feedback. So let us know. And then we can also tell you to go fuck yourself if you're completely wrong. <laughs> but if you're right, we're going to pat you on the back and tell you good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, totally. I'm, I know for me, I was hoping to do some get good scrub streaming, but just life kind of got in the way and I didn't have much time outside of just prepping for this and making the deck and testing it out. So, um, that hopefully I can get into that a little bit in the next time we do that. Cause it would be fun to, uh, you know, talk about it live on the stream and uh, get people's feedback in real time. Yeah, totally. That's a great idea. And uh, we'll schedule that in next time for sure. Uh, thanks, Colin. This was great. Tons of fun. Great idea. Can't wait to do it again. Thank you, everybody who participated once again. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, etc. Thank you all. And uh, yeah. We'll see you freaking next time. This has been We Build, You Build. Good night. See ya.